G'day Marshmallows and welcome back to the Coco Couch. We are watching Harry Potter, the 20th anniversary return to Hogwarts. Um, I've gotten to this point now where I kind of, I'm immersed in the universe so much. I just want to know more and more. The anniversary video is, um, you know, a way for me to learn even more about what the actors were thinking, um, their experiences on set, that sort of thing. So I'm really excited. You can skip to this if you want to, but I'm going to do the sorting hat quiz for you guys. So you can watch me go through all the different questions. I'm trying to make that as fun as possible for you guys. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see whether my house changes from Slytherin to something else. I guess you guys will get to some insight into the way that I think when I answer some of these questions and why I could be um, Slytherin or why I could be Gryffindor or, you know, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So that will be really interesting, so check that out after this reaction. Yeah, without further ado, let's jump into it. Oh, okay, just showing us little bits of the cast outside. Nice. I see you, Hermione. I mean, Emma Watson. <laughs> of course she's in front of books, though. <laughs> this is cool, the way they're doing this. <laughs> oh, Luna! Ginny! Alrighty. I'm surprised by how cinematic they're making this. I thought it was going to be very, like, interviewee like Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Them again. That was one of the funniest things about the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Aww. After knowing about their chemistry on set, this is so cute. <laughs> yeah, hey man, it's great to see you. Hey, so nice to see you. Oh, uh, okay, so we're going through each movie. I ended up doing it because my daughter, Eleanor, convinced me to read the books. Uh, Immediately, I saw the movies. I just saw them. Then I had to fly to Edinburgh to meet Joe Rowling. This is my vision. She said, that's exactly the way I see the movie. Oh. Thousands of them all waiting for the latest one. Yeah, I bet. It became like our family thing. Dad oh. used to do all the voices. Just beg him every time he finished a chapter to be like, one more, one more, please, just one more. <laughs> I didn't realize how much everyone was affected by these books. The writing was so vivid, the characters so relatable. I just think it's a beautiful, creative outlook on life. Limitless possibilities. Yeah, I can see why it's so appealing to people. It's the perfect hero's journey. The search for Harry Potter was insane. Imagine landing that role. Oh, there's still one gentleman holding a boom mic straight over our heads. <laughs> and this little girl asked me, What's that? I think he even said, it's a mic, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it because it was Emma. I. Ah, that's hilarious. Always knew that I was going for Hermione. Imagine being that ambitious when you're that young. We couldn't find Harry. <laughs> we couldn't. We just couldn't find Harry. I love how involved she is. One night watching the BBC version of David Copperfield, I said, "This is Harry Potter. This is the kid oh, we've been looking for." Oh, so he saw him in something else. We've got to get him in here for an audition. She said, "It's never going to happen. His parents do not want him involved in this world." Ooh. David being the great producer that he is, convinced Dan's father to bring Dan in for an audition. That's epic. Basically when we got our Harry Potter. Yeah, you're signing away your whole childhood, aren't you? What's that? Dragon egg. Uh-huh. Hmm. He's a very happy kid who had a really haunted quality, apparently. Yeah, he's sweet, but he looks very tormented. Like he has trauma. We screen tested the three of them together. It was obvious in the first screen test. I never thought to look in here. This is life. Shut up. <laughs> I knew it! Sorcerer Stone! The what? Oh, honestly, don't you two read? <laughs> They're so good, uh, even as kids, especially Ron. It feels like no time has passed and loads of time has passed simultaneously. It doesn't feel like we kind of earned a reunion yet. Yeah, right. We're announcing you've got the parts. There is now going to be a lot of media outside your house. So you can't go Imagine. I've never had anything happen to me like this before. Like I am that girl. That's a good sign. Arguably the smartest person on the set. You'd have to be, to be Hermione. I live in a burrow. Rupert is just <laughs> the most camera ready 12 year old boy. He seemed like it. Very charismatic. First film I was dying the entire time. <laughs> I always believe you cannot bring that kind of anxiety. I want everyone to feel comfortable. I want everyone to feel like they're home. Yeah, right. 
well, yeah, to get the chemistry working for the actors, right? You want everyone else to feel comfortable and like friends in Hogwarts, right? You don't want to feel like you're on a set. I want you to raise your hand over the broom. This was hilarious, that scene. I wasn't ever like completely overwhelmed by it. It kept us having fun the whole time. We were all looking forward to mucking about together. You know what we did a lot of as well was that. Oh, slaps. March oh, hand slaps. slaps. Yeah. yeah, how do you pass the time as kids? You just want to be entertained all the time. Sorry. It's good the directors recognize that's how they get stuff out of the kids. Like a <laughs> Our attention would like, would wane and come and go. Guys, 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 guys. Mm -hmm. Columbus had worked with kids a lot and he was terrific. He used to go down in his knees to talk to them. Good. It's not easy because it takes a tremendous amount of patience, particularly with, with kids as hyperactive and as excitable as we all were. Yep. <laughs> the sets were here. so grand. <laughs> Come here. Columbus basically just let us be yeah, kids. True. And yeah. Is, is being surrounded by all the, the cream of the, um, the British acting industry and not having a clue who anyone is. Yeah, you don't get the shock from big actors. They don't even know who this guy is. Yeah. The kids had Good afternoon. <laughs> the adult actors came in and were like the mischief. <laughs> Robbie Coltrane. He was such a kid, like, he loved making his laugh and he was incredibly good at it. That's good. They're all so cute together, the entire cast. The warmth from you, oh. it made all the difference. Oh. Will we spend? He is Hagrid. Keep thinking about that scene where I get called a mudblood. Yes. And you were so sweet with me. Yeah. Like my first, like, you know. Big piece of acting. Yeah, for real. No pressure. They call me a mudblood. You have become mm. such great actors. Yeah, they were good to begin with, but over time, they actually became great actors. Hogwarts shouldn't feel as if it's a world that couldn't exist in reality. Tremendous amount of creative freedom. Well, you got good source material, mate. <laughs> they walked me through the Great Hall, which was mind-blowing oh yeah you'd be so giddy as the author too wouldn't you and all these lit candles going up and down in wires all the floating candles started burning through the ropes that tied them to the ceiling uh hundreds of real candles that oh, were wow, really yeah. lit on the fishing line kneeling. wow so much of that would be visual effects now that's incredible the hardest scene to shoot was quidditch and the audience had to understand the rules immediately that's awesome our production designer designed the look of the quidditch pitch it did really feel like something this world had been doing for decades. The camera pushes into you and you say, I'm, we're not going home, not real. I'm not going home. Not really. Not really. I got tears, I still get tears in my eyes thinking about it. Yeah, it's his, it's his eyes. That kind of opened up the whole world for us. That would be so comforting to finish the first movie and to be validated, like that everything worked, you know? Cause you have six more, well, seven more movies to do, right? The uh, first film was a hit. Yep. So once it became a hit, yes. I, I had a ball on the oh, second cool. film. Yeah, you can you can do the rest of the franchise with peace. <laughs> yeah, right. This is where Harry gets all his family values. Hey. Okay, come on. Shh. I want to read more about the Weasleys in the books and how they essentially raised Harry. I feel like being a Weasley is the best part of being in Harry Potter. They really were like older brothers always kind of staying in character and they would have this kind of bounce off each other yeah the brothers would have been good to look up to you know because they're they're still kids but they they're more mature see the complete opposite with the malfoys yeah it's always such a good comparison the two families yeah very polar opposite now draco play nicely this is a potter <laughs> i was about to play captain hook in peter pan and i thought well i don't want to play two children's villains. That's right, I remember him in that. Asked me to play Lucius and thank God they did. The point of him being in the story to me, explain why Draco was such a horrible. It's not him, it's his father, right? He's a product of his parents, Draco. If Hagrid was your first influence, chances are you're gonna be, all right, they're a mate, you're gonna be lovely and, and very huggy. Yeah, for real. If your dad is a psychopath wielding a cobra cane out about. <laughs> yeah, poor Draco. And I went, gee, touch anything. But I didn't know how sharp the teeth were. And they went right into little Tom's hand. Oh! Looked up at me and his eyes welled with tears. And he went, no, no, it's all right. It's good for the scene. <laughs> and he'll come and give you a cuddle and say, oh, did I, did I hit you too hard? Did I hit you too hard? No, Jekyll and Hyde, that one. Shows the range he has, though. He's such a kind person in real life, but then he can just go, bam. 
evil. <laughs> I remember saying to a friend, you know, I've got this party. He's Dobby. Squeals of joy and a complete despair at my not understanding. Yeah, right. I remember him from Ever After. And I said, no, I didn't slip. He said, well, what happened? And I said, I, I kicked Dobby down the stairs. <laughs> wow. So he did that, the blocking himself. This is going to be ridiculously good fun. <laughs> Nice. This alliance of friends who endure. Oh, that was such a cute smile. I always love, I love that moment. <laughs> Animatronic version of yeah. Fox the Phoenix. And Damn, so convincing. I do not know of another human being that could have started the series in the way you did. I always felt mm. guilty about leaving. Yeah, that's you sad. You really ever get enough credit for like what you achieved. On yeah. Yeah, he didn't just make the first two movies. He started a franchise. Sirius Black is an essential character for Harry. Don't judge a book by its cover. You know, the image of Sirius Black. Yeah, very important message. It's a uh, coming of age. They are passing the pressure. Yes. Childhood and their teenage years. That's good, yeah. The first two, Harry is still a child. There's a, a big cloud that overshadows everything around Harry. This movie set the tone for the rest of the franchise, didn't it? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, this scene really set the tone. Descriptions that J.K. Rowling has of the Dementors. Very scary. I bet. They really suck all the joy uh, away. That the most important piece to achieve that was dance performance. Mm-hmm. Ask about how old were you? <laughs> 14. Really? Wow. When we first met? Yeah. So young. Mm -hmm. A natural sort of paternal thing. <laughs> A natural paternal thing chokes him. <laughs> you were like, Listen, Emma, you need to be cool. Gary Oldman, it's a really big deal, and... It was really a projection of my own fears. <laughs> yeah. And Gary was amazingly generous. He immediately embraced him and include him in, in the acting process. That's great. In many ways, Harry has made a totem out of Sirius Black. Yeah, you see it. You, you feel it. What a blessing for Daniel Radcliffe, though. Just watching these like incredible actors whose process doesn't have to be painful. It can be intense. I have never done a scene with yeah. such an amazing cast in my life. Yeah, wow. It's a scene in which there are a lot of twists inside the scene. You can see Rupert and Emma and Dan that they are completely committed to the scene. Yeah, they're, they're acting elevated because of the adults. Painted as this villainous guy and then has the switch where you go, ah, oh, and he's a good guy. And he's so kind. He's so convincing too. He sets this exercise where he asked us to write an essay in character. Good. They didn't have to do homework up until this point. <laughs> when you're doing the scenes, it's as if everything is just flowing out of her. Proof of the matter is that they are great actors. Yeah, you can be great actors and be completely different in your methods. I think it's incredible. Like, I get that people find that some of the movies leave out details and stuff like that, but I love that the directors all have tried to capture the themes of the books, and that's the priority. Goblet of Fire doing all of the Triwizard Tournament stuff and, like, taken away by the magic of the scenes and to be surprised. Vaux Batons come and do their entrance and... <laughs> that was pretty funny, that scene. Mike is just this excited, loud, passionate man. <laughs> That's how the movie felt. The biggest of them is about 900 pages. It's a doorstop. Wow. And I thought it has to have this great big energetic core. That would have been a nice change of pace. Fred and George are rejected from entering the Triwizard Tournament. Yeah. Pressing about at it. No, come on, boys, really. It's a fight. Yeah, you want to actually bash each other? Of course, I was a tubby 60 year old gent and <laughs> uh, just went like this to each other. Oh, okay. So I did the same to him. And cracked a couple of ribs. Oh! Knowing you shouldn't <laughs> break a director's rib. <sighs> Oh, well, look, that's not your fault. <laughs> Teenagers, you know, having crushes for the first time. Those kind of awkward phases you go through. A lot of hormones flying around. The peak hormone, at least for me. <laughs> that's such a funny thing to say. You had a bunch of, like, hormonal teenagers anyway, and then, like, two massive groups. And a bunch of girls in their 20s, like, what? <laughs> and I feel like it did not huge acting stretch for me to tap into my um, awkward... <laughs> it didn't take much effort, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much like a typical school dance of that age. You've got girls on one side, boys on the other. Bruh, I never got that. <laughs> Hand on my waist. What? The kid's 14 and he knows how to get a laugh. Yeah, that was hilarious. Never 
danced with a lady before. Perfect. Harry and Ron, particularly Ron, see Hermione as a young woman, yeah. not just this kind of sidekick that they each have. And I was miserable. <laughs> uh. I, I just knew it was the like, duckling becomes a swan. Yeah, so much attention on her. Mike Newell coached me to walk down the stairs and you're walking too quickly. You need to walk slower. I fell down the stairs. <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty rigid in, in that dance scene. But well, that's good for the character, right? <laughs> lucky man, lucky man. <laughs> Boys loved each other, really. The assignment that had been given was to draw what you thought God looked like. Tom had drawn a girl with a backward cap on a skateboard. <laughs> what? I just fell in love with him. I used to come in every day and right. look for his number on the call sheet. Was That's cute. Tom was the one that I could often be vulnerable with. That's adorable. That's all I can say about that. That's so cute. I love that. It's so interesting when opposite characters, but the actors are so close. Mm. Ray finds. I mean, is that what we're going to? I'm so excited to see him. Yeah, no, what a change in the franchise. He's one of the most potent actors of his generation. Yep. Kind of delicate, subtle force of personality. And Schindler's List was before this, right? I thought, wow, that's a strong look. And I felt he was the essence of evil. He's Good. been human, but he's become a snake-like thing. The voice, the sort of snake-like whispered, come to die. <laughs> And suddenly, you realize that this movie is not about life, it's about death. Yeah, very mature. I love the first four movies, but the rest of them, this, I love the stakes. You know, let's do this in your house. I know, it's so nice. <laughs> oh, here. Really oh, that's cool hilarious. Here. I mean, has anyone fed them? If you want to see something with Helena when she's really young, where she's brilliant, A Room with a View is really good. Oh, God, what did I write? No, read it out. It's so. Nice. How old is she? She looks great. I do love you. Then what does it say? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> have a crush. You can check. Uh, I do love you, and I just wish I'd been born ten years earlier. I might oh. have been in with a chance. Oh. Lots of love and thanks for being cool. Isn't it nice? That's adorable. That's not humiliating. That's so sweet. <laughs> She was brilliant. Bellatrix was just this wild thing that was uncontrollable. Ah! Very exciting for an actor. Like whatever she did on that take does not mean she's gonna do. Yeah, for real. Trying to be in charge of the scene and her just having the best time. <laughs> you fell the off blood! It's not right, it's just a curious land, aren't you? <laughs> oh, the balance was so good though. I killed you, didn't I? You killed me, yeah. but um <laughs> I just be done. I remember we had a real duel and they cut the whole lot. <laughs> oh, really? Because there was a certain group like Maggie. Yeah. Uh, they... I love how they're in her room where she keeps all her treasure. You and Gary and David like, would yeah. treat us more like adults. I saw in yeah. us that like a few of us were like kind of ready to be like, uh, can you push me? Like we, we want yeah, to. Yeah. That's how you want to be treated as a teenager though, like an adult. You respect people so much more as a teenager when you get treated like an adult. Because that's what you want to be. Must be discouraged. Brilliant performance. I went into Order of the Phoenix with the young actors in mind, thinking about how we sort of grow the whole thing up. Yeah, right. It's good that they had the same director for the rest of the franchise, you know, because it all had to be the same story, the same tone. Emma is uh, not sure she wants to come back to do another Potter. Oh, I was told this in the comments. People definitely forget what she took on and how gracefully she did it. As a woman that that young too, it would be harder. I also think you get sexualized too at such a young age, which is horrific. I never really spoke to you about this. This is kind of forever now. Yeah, no, I had moments like that. Yeah, the way people are treating you, yeah. Yes, we were just kind of going through it at our own pace. We were kind of in the moment. The fame thing had finally hit home. Anyone who thinks that being a celebrity is just good, horrible, especially for kids. I mean, have you seen how many child actors and celebrities, like, go off the rails? Like, yeah. I'm really looking forward to watching the films with my hypothetical children one day. It is extraordinary. It is unbelievable. Wouldn't that be awesome, showing your kids something you were, you were in? I remember Dan very vividly. He was on my screen test. Mistletoe. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe just gets up. Mm. Hello, everyone. <laughs> People who had this strange power, but who still had 
enormous humanity. Movies kind of gave people permission to accept parts of themselves. Luna was a fantastic addition. Biggest bunch of misfits I've ever set eyes on. We're still a bunch of misfits. Well, maybe. <laughs> Also, being a strange kid makes the most interesting adult. Mummy, have you seen my jumper? Yes, it was on the cat. <laughs> that was a great first scene. Ginny, Harry, that relationship, how that kind of slowly developed. Everyone on this set has known you for about six or seven years and they watch you grow up, watch you kiss. Cool, yeah. Yeah, that'd be so weird. Because if you don't have any romantic interest, it would just be like, what the heck? Doing these incredibly elaborate moves and... Nothing happened. <laughs> Except one time mm. it did happen with me. You're gonna blow up Hogwarts. Oh yeah, you got to do it, didn't you? Oh wow. When you do your spell, it will blow up. <laughs> That's awesome. That'd be so cool. Scared by my own reaction because I thought, wow. <laughs> that would have been so this epic. Horrible set thrill of power. Her reaction's perfect too, just jumping. What Draco's journey is, is to do with whether he is or isn't trying to please his father. I have to kill you. It's so sad, isn't it? He's gonna kill me. Oh. Had always been somewhat two-dimensional. That's what I thought, yeah. Able to give him the opportunity to explore a far more complex. Yes, that's what I loved about this movie. Draco is the hero. Harry's always gonna do the right thing. Harry's always gonna make the right choice. Draco breaks the chains of this terrible family. He's so human. <laughs> And the whole time he was saving Dra Draco from having to kill Voldemort. Gosh, man. <laughs> Does not do to dwell on dreams, forget to live. He was so twinkly. Probably one of the funniest men I've ever met. That's what you want from a wizard, though. Richard Griffiths was just delicious as uh, Mr. Dursley. Interesting way to describe someone. He was generous with knowledge. He was just like wanted to share everything with you. I wondered when I'd be seeing you, Mr. Potter. It's wonderful they're giving a moment to honor the dead at the moment. The Dark Lord himself forbade me to speak of this. I didn't know she passed. I feel lucky to have worked with her and shared just so much. Taught me a lot. See, I can't even say it. <laughs> Aww. To show such uh, empathy in our eyes. It was a real treat to work with her. Snare the senses. It answers to you. I was a little intimidated by him, precision, his expert delivery of lines. Really? Yeah, they're like equals in terms of their ability. I love the respect they both had for each other. Let's never really leave us. Aww. Doing this. In here. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Most powerful wand ever made. I can't believe I watched these, like, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the actors on the, mm -hmm. the Marauders map. I'm having, like, weird nostalgic moments. Remember my hamster? Did anyone remember right. my hamster? Yeah. Millie! Yeah, I didn't remember the hamster's yeah, name, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> they made a coffin for it, the <laughs> carpentry department. Yeah. I kept wanting to pick up dead Millie. Oh. I'm, like, Oh. And, and he was like, Emma, Millie's got to like stay uh, in the coffin now. I, we yeah. all still look better than we do in the epilogue, which yes. is great. Like, which is made a win. Wow. <laughs> that's great. That that's the expectation now for their future. And a fat suit. <laughs> yeah, I was very. I was. I think I was I've kind of... Yeah, they did give him a fat suit. He very went well. all in. Yeah. <laughs> I was so proud of you. That's interesting that he accepted that so easily. Like, yeah, he gets fat. It's like, okay. Describe us as astronauts. Because no one else has really experienced this on this scale. For real. We have all fallen asleep in various, some of the most grand cathedrals. That's beautiful, that experience. I trusted that one of you would catch me. Like that kind of trust and reliance, and there's very few working environments where you get that much time to build that up. It's so unique, their experience, isn't it? I think the only experience that's gonna top this is gonna be whoever they cast for the show, right? That's gonna be a real life-changing commitment. I saw you two the other night. Well, that's, that's nothing. That was so hard to watch. Awkward, and I wasn't sure about it at all, the which dance? was us doing our dance. Yeah. That's one of my favorite scenes from the whole of the series. Yeah. I don't think I could have done a scene like that with another actor. It broke so much tension in the movie. It was really refreshing. It's so interesting that Emma said though in an interview that there was like, they had to play with slight romantic subtext. But I do love that the whole point of the scene though is Harry trying to cheer her up. I, it's so pure. I love it so much. Just two friends. 
<laughs> Good. You do your thing. Yeah. I'll be here. For me, running is a stunt. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. That's why I got caught so quickly. I actually remember the three of us telling each other that we were doing a good job. We'd see each other do like a bit of real acting. You'd go, oh, oh cool. That was, that was cool. Yeah, that was, was really good. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, us kissing most horrifying thing either oh. of us. Oh, jeez. The way that sort of just bubbles away under the story constantly. <clears throat> yeah. That was the biggest hint earlier. Relationship has been so restrained for so long and desperate to see these two kiss. I know, what a build up. Doing the kiss between Ron and Hermione in, this the, cha week. in the Chamber of Secrets. Wow, imagine being told that. <laughs> Made sure they were both comfortable prepping them for a major sports event. Because you and I just kept corpsing. Like, it was a make out, yeah. Couldn't because we just couldn't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Kind of have to be the one to kind of make this thing happen because Rupert was not gonna yeah. So I just had to go for it. Ooh. I needed like momentum into the kiss. I saw Rupert's face explode with surprise. Oh, it's only the first take. I just remember your face getting closer and closer to my... That's so cute though. Do you make it sound like an actual horror show? I know. <laughs> It was very well done, though. It's hard to just make out with someone for the first time, especially in front of cameras. <laughs> Mate. Just felt wrong. So wrong. Dan, Rupert and I are so much siblings. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine. I gave you the hug to say goodbye. I knew I was saying goodbye to the series. I knew I was saying goodbye to you. Mm hmm. Yeah, that would be so difficult. I owe so much to Neville as a character. Very, very shy and I wouldn't, I would never speak up in class. I wouldn't put my hand up for anything. Very much was him. You can see the shine when he see, look opens the hat. You can, I, I didn't pick up on that until now. That deep connection that we'd sort of threaded through the story. It was so films. creepy, but very poetic. My forearm got so tight that you had to. Yeah, of course. You're flexing your forearm all the time. It has to deliver. <laughs> yeah, it all came down to that moment. It was so good. I love seeing Ray Fine's confusion. Like, how is this happening? Like, I'm invincible. It was so good. What do you You're do, Cam? I'm for the press, exactly. <laughs> it's your first day, how does it feel? It feels absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'm very proud to have been part of it. Lost track of who I was and who the character was. Mm. Most like we did the most extreme form of method acting. Yeah, yeah. Feels like you're like a pillar of my life. Even though we don't see each other all the time, yeah. it's a strong, a strong bond that we'll always have and we will always be part of each other's life. That's beautiful. They almost didn't need to say anything there. You just felt it. Oh. I love you. <laughs> say it back. As a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just be clear. Just to be clear. Just... <laughs> Rubes. Let's do a rehearsal. Oh, Rubes. Those final scenes. Diving past the camera, landing on this huge crash mat. What it all came down to, this one take. Metaphor. Wow. For what was actually happening. Interesting that that was the last scene. People who'd supported them and had been there for them throughout. That'd be so bittersweet. It's like relief, but also sadness for letting go. All of us just holding each other. <laughs> All three of us were like utterly devastated. I measure my life with these movies. When did you pass your driving test? Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> When I meet people who are important part of their life, yeah, it just makes you really proud. Things get really dark and times are really hard. Stories give us places we can go where we can rest and feel held. To be a small kind of part of that and just seeing it kind of relive on and finding new... He's so humble. He's a big part of that. Every child wonders how they're going to fit in. Dobby will always be there for Harry Potter. Stay close to me until the end. An extraordinary world to be involved with. Harry. Harry. You get to see young children grow into adults. Finest gamekeeper in Hogwarts, last day on Harry Potter. Most amazing experience. And I can't really explain to you, like, they're such good people. They both took the responsibility of it really seriously. Appreciated that so much. It really is like family. Foundational to who I am. 
I feel so lucky to be where I am. None of it is possible without this. It was a very good 10 years. Wow. It's so poetic, isn't it? That Hogwarts and Harry's friends formed him. The crew formed Daniel Radcliffe. Wow. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for telling me to watch this, you guys. That was... I'd almost say that this is essential to watch after you've seen the franchise. It's such a beautiful, efficient way to encapsulate the feelings of the crew and the actors involved in the project and what it meant to them and what it's meant to generations of people. All right, well, just a few thoughts before I jump into the Pottermore quiz. Again, thank you so much, guys, for suggesting to watch, like, suggesting that to me to watch. That was such a beautiful thing to watch, is actors and um, filmmakers and crew just work so tirelessly um, on something that they care so deeply about, not just for the sake of art, but for the sake of really providing generations of people with a a very moral story um something that's timeless that they can take that's encouraging and comforting perhaps in times when they feel alone like they said i think it's such a beautiful message and i don't i don't want to regret anything but there is a part of me that wishes i did watch these earlier than i did um just because of um how influential these have been to so many people and how beautiful the story is and how encouraging it is anything that i say um now they articulated it a lot better in what i just watched but things that really resonated with me uh, on a personal level was the way the actors cared so much about storytelling and the importance of passing down um themes and morals and ethics um, to live by and um, how in a strange way yes you can tell someone to behave a certain way that you think is moral or ethical or you can try to teach someone um, how to you know prepare for life and all the challenges that there are and you know the possibility of feeling lonely at times or you know facing I guess in your own life your own Voldemort but nothing um, I think truly teaches you those things better than a story. And that's why just humanity has told stories to each other for millennia. Like, it, it is such an intrinsic part of who we are is storytelling. And the importance of passing down those stories to each other cannot be underestimated. Um, and we do it so vividly now through movies and film and that's why I love film so much myself and that's why I want to tell stories like those actors and um, be involved in projects like that and to be part of a family like that um, is to leave a timeless um, fingerprint I guess in storytelling and I think just those experiences the actors had on set is just so inspiring to me I think that's I think that's the perfect word really to encapsulate how I feel about that anniversary um, special is it's inspiring to me and um, it's left me feeling so excited and just full of motivation and purpose um, which I think is a beautiful way to finish um, a franchise like that and uh, yeah I had a great time so Anyway, thank you very much. So stay tuned. I'm about to do the Pottermore quiz. Um, that's going to be super interesting. I'll see how things go with that. Um, let's get into it. Moon or the stars? <laughs> so the way I'm going to do this isn't, isn't going to be like um, other quizzes where I feel like when you get lots of questions, um, generally I just kind of sift through them very quickly. It's always just like instant. Like, um, how do you feel about this thing? And I'm just like, bam, bam, bam. Where I feel like with these, I want to spend more time really thinking about it. <laughs> Personally, that's, I find them far more fun when you really, when you really think very hard about each of the questions. Oh, mate, moon or the stars? Well, look, I look at the moon and it looks really cool and mysterious, but I look at the stars and I think like adventure. That's how I feel about stars personally. So we're going to go stars. Okay. If you attended Hogwarts, which pet would you choose to take with you? Um, so I initially really felt like owls were kind of cool and I really liked them. 
but I just feel like when I want a companion, I want something that's far more, something, something that can be affectionate, but like a companion. Okay, um, so ginger, white cat, Siamese cat, tabby cat, black cat. I know this feels very Slytherin, but just black cats just look so cool. Also, whenever I see a black cat in a movie, they just look very cuddly to me personally. I just kind of want to squeeze it. <laughs> also, this one looks very playful. I kind of like it. So I'm going to go with the black cat. A troll has gone berserk in the headmaster's study at Hogwarts. It is about to smash, crush, and tear several irreplaceable items and treasures. In which order would you rescue these objects from the trolls club if you could? Okay, so we got a nearly perfected cure for dragon pox. Oh, that seems pretty, like you're saving people's lives. I put, I'm gonna put that one, just initially. A student records going back a thousand years. Ooh. Okay, so this is the history of every student for a thousand years. Like, what if you get in a situation like you did with Voldemort? I feel like information like that would be very valuable. Like, depending on where you are in history for Wizards and Witches, I feel like student records would really help you figure out what the problems are. The same way when Harry was with Dumbledore, going back into memories and um, that sort of thing was really valuable and was a central part of finding out what they needed to about the Horcruxes. So I'm going to make that number two because I do feel like in the span of history, Dragon Pox being cured. I know it's nearly perfected, but I feel like that's just as um, important. Mysterious handwritten book full of strange runes. See, I feel like if you're, I feel like obviously any of these things you can use in a selfless way, but I do feel like a mysterious handwritten book full of strange runes if you put that as number one, I do feel like that's personally a little bit more, I don't know, it's less helpful to the greater good. Um, so I'm going to put that as number three. I'm pretty happy with that order. I reckon that's good. Dragon Pox, student records, and then runes. Which of the following would you most hate people to call you? So this is more of a, a question of your insecurity and that sort of thing. Okay. Cowardly, ordinary, selfish, or ignorant. Um, I don't mind being called ignorant. I get called it a lot sometimes in the comments. <laughs> um, it's not really that much of an insult. I feel like ignorance can be bliss, you know? I don't mind b being called ignorant at times. It's like, whatever, who cares? Um, selfish, I do take that a little bit personally because I do care very much about um, being selfless and having good character and caring very much about other people. Ordinary. Ooh, that's a tough one. If someone called me ordinary, I wouldn't feel too insecure about it. It doesn't feel as personal to me. Cowardly, I I kind of take that as a bit of an insult. Nah, I, 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 I can literally feel the ego coming up when I, I'm hypothetically putting in my head someone being like, you're a coward. I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, I'll, I'll do it. Like... <laughs> Maybe that's a like a male sort of thing, like a tendency. Like if a if a guy says to you, like, "What are you? Are you a coward? Are you chicken or something?" I'm like, "What? No." <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go with cowardly. <laughs> Please don't don't read too much into this, into my personality. Don't be like, "Oh, this guy is this and that." Like this is just. Can we just put out a disclaimer really quickly? I feel like quizzes like this, I really enjoy them, and I think they are qu quite insightful if you use them well but I don't think they're the end all and be all of your personality. I think only you can really determine, um, you know, who you are and uh, that sort of thing. I don't think tests are very necessarily helpful. If anything, sometimes I've known people that have gone down rabbit holes too much with personality tests and they've kind of, they've used them as almost the gospel, you know, it's like, this is, this is true. I'm, this is my identity. I think that can be dangerous. Um, and I like how there's that quote, what is it, in uh, the Chamber of Secrets where Dumbledore's like, it's your choices that define who you are. I think that is very much true. If you could have any power, which would you choose? The power to read minds, the power to change the past. Ooh. I like this question because it makes me think about the hypotheticals. I think if you have a time traveling machine, I think that can be dangerous. But the way that Hermione did it, where she went back only a little bit and it's, there was already a loop, you know, things were already in motion. It didn't really disrupt um, the flow of time. I like that idea. So that's a useful tool. The power of invincibility. 
I'm oh, sorry, in not invincibility, the power of invisibility. The power to speak to animals. Okay, so I can see two different sides to this. I think that some people think that that's the best thing because obviously you've just unlocked the potential to talk to every living thing on the planet. But personally, I think if we're talking about the real world, I think animals are pretty dumb. <laughs> Sorry, that's just me. I think that if you're in the universe of Harry Potter, all the animals like have not just intelligence, but they have like personalities and a soul, if you know what I mean. Like every animal should be treated as a person in that universe. You know what I mean? Where I think here, if I had the ability to talk to a cow, it's just like, I just wouldn't, that's not useful to me. Unless you're talking to really intelligent animals like um, crows or dolphins. I think it just kind of, I don't know. I, I think the only purpose it would serve is to use them, which I don't like. I don't like the idea of using animals to kind of get what you want. Um, so I'm going to pass on that. Um, the power of superhuman strength. I think it's a very two-dimensional sort of power. I think if I was younger, I probably would have gone straight for this because I've seen it in so many movies and it's so cool. But I think practically in the real world, I think um, there are more useful things, but we'll come back to it just in case. The power to change your appearance at will is a pretty intense power. I think that that can be very manipulative possibly, but I think it could also be very useful. I just think that it's essentially a power where you're lying, if you know what I mean. Um, which I'm not so sure about. Uh, so I'm going to go power invisibility, the power to change the past, the power to read minds. The power to read minds means you can really be super charismatic. You can know what people are thinking. You can manipulate. You can figure out what people's intentions are, but you can also do a lot of good with it. Oh, so much responsibility. I'm sorry. I'm overthinking this so much. The power to read minds. Look, okay, so <laughs> before you come at me in the comments, uh, the way I'm justifying the power to read minds is I think that despite the fact that you might, I think if it's something you could turn on and off, I think it's useful. I think if you're going through life and you can hear everyone's thoughts all the time, I think that that's a horrible power. But I think if you can decide when to read someone's mind, I think that that can be used for good. Obviously, any like any power, it depends on the person, right? Whether it can be used for good or bad. Um, I think I would trust myself the most with the power to read minds more than any other power just because I feel like my intention whenever I use the power would be to, it'd be out of empathy, um, trying to figure out why someone feels the way they feel, try to help in any way I can. If you are using this ability with the intention to help people and understand people, I think that can be so good for humanity personally. Um, okay. What kind of instrument most pleases your ear? I grew up playing the piano. Um, I'm quite proficient at it, if I do say so myself, but it's too familiar. I just feel like I've heard it all my life. Drums are epic, but personally, I, I think that drums are only cool to listen to if it's with something else. Violin, that's the most, to me, that's the most beautiful solo instrument to listen to. Trumpet, it's too much for me. I'm gonna go to violin for sure, beautiful. Okay, so this is this is the question that crosses my mind the most out of anything else. Someone explained to me, actually it was my housemate. He said that um, a Gryffindor is always seeking adventure. They're brave, right? They want to they want to go down the path that is most adventurous, which is why they choose the woods, right? There's more potential for an adventure down there. Where a Slytherin, all they're thinking in their mind is what can I get what can i achieve um in these different locations so it's not a matter of which takes more bravery it's a matter of how you feel about um these images which is um a slytherin would choose um where is it the narrow dark lantern lit alley they would choose that because they go there's more potential to find items and things that i can use to get ahead that's the mentality. That's how my housemate explained it to me. So when a Slytherin looks at the woods, they think it's just empty. There's nothing there that they can use. They're like, oh, what's the point? In life, I'm trying to get ahead. I'm not getting anywhere if I go into the woods. Um, for me, when I look at the all of these, the cobbled street lined with ancient buildings, that's pretty cool. Um, the narrow dark lant lantern lit alley, very creepy. I think it's just kind of boring though. Like. 
and I look at the wide sunny grassy lane and I'm like that that's I'm, I'm sure it's gorgeous um, beautiful views um, you know it's basically eye candy but I look at the twisting leaf strewn path through the woods and I go that is my vibe I love to climb trees just a little FYI <laughs> to this day okay heads or tails um heads or tails that's an interesting question I can't I don't think I can really go into detail about this this is how do I feel about heads or tails actually when I think about heads or tails I think about a coin actually and I always go with tails don't know why oh well, here we go let's go let's see what I am who am I define me <laughs> hey what I'm a Gryffindor huh okay interesting okay this is a bit of a revelation because I got um Slytherin last time <laughs> did the same quiz but got slightly different questions last time and I got Slytherin so depending on the questions I get because I know that there are multi there are like 10 to 15 questions but they only select a few depending on who signs up because I know that um they missed a couple ones like I answered a question the last one where it said what goblet would you choose of um this fluid right and there was like a gold one there was a silver one there was a black one there was a purple one I chose the silver one and that went towards a Slytherin answer uh so it's interesting that the questions in this one got me Gryffindor based on this result I would say I am both a Slyth Slytherin and Gryffindor depending on the questions um and anyone who's done these quiz multiple these quizzes multiple times would probably understand that too i guess at the end of the day if i could choose i would choose this is just me right i would choose slytherin and my mentality is very slytherin like if i i would choose slytherin because i value being surrounded by a community that value achieving getting the job done um, using their wit and their knowledge to, you know, pursue very uh, ambitious endeavors. I want to be surrounded by people that are going to help me grow. And I think that being surrounded by achievers in Slytherin would be the best environment for that. That's my mentality. And I guess that's what would make me a Slytherin. But based on this quiz, I got Gryffindor. So that is super interesting. I think that the nuance there speaks to people's personality and how unique we all are. Sorting a house put me in Gryffindor. So that's that's where I am. So let's do my Patronus. The Patronus is interesting because, oh, hello. We're getting a whole animation thing. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Can we start the quiz? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, so like, can we just get on with it? Relax. Think of your happiest memories. Surf, protect, seek. Uh, I'm going to say, what? Oh, what just happened? Okay, okay, all right, I'm sorry. I won't think too hard. I'm sorry, that's just me. I, I, I think too hard about things. <laughs> Glitter, shine, glow. Uh, d d shine. <laughs> Gosh, okay. I'm like trying not to freak out. I'm putting, being put on the spot. Make or improve? Uh, make. I'm a creator. A creative, I'll always be a creative person. Um, okay, hence these videos. <laughs> Earth, wood or stone? Uh, stone. I don't know. I just feel like I can use that to make things that are epic. <laughs> this is really creeping me out. <laughs> forever, sometimes. Forever. I don't know why. Sometimes sounds unsure, and I'm not an unsure person, generally. Black or gray or white? Uh, white. <laughs> I hope that is okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just see white, and I think holy. <laughs> and I see black, and I just thought evil straight away. And I was like, I'm good. Click, drag, and release your Patronus. Okay. Uh, what are we looking at? Your Patronus is a fox. Interesting. That's a cool Patronus. I am not disappointed. That is such a cool Patronus. You know, speaking of which, I actually really love foxes. I think that they can be really cute, but also like very devious. I like it. I feel like that speaks a lot to who I am too. I like to be a... I don't know, I think it speaks to my personality. Like, I, I I feel like people see me and they think I'm like a puppy or like a dog, but I also feel like I'm very devious and I have, like, plans and I think about things very elaborately. So, I, I think a fox is very 
suiting for that. Now we're going to do the wand. I don't know how any of these work. I've never done the Patronus or the wand one before. First of all, would you describe yourself as average height, tall or short? I know I'm 5'10". Um, look, I'm just going to do average height just because I'm not tall. Tall is like six foot. Um, and your eyes are dark brown, black, blue, gray, brown. Uh, mine are hazel, but it's like a brown, green, sort of bluish. Was the day on which you were born an even number or an odd number? And is the 2nd of July. Do you most pride yourself on your determination, imagination, resilience, intelligence, originality, optimism, and kindness? I think that just based on what I've faced and just the path I've chosen in life and just the different challenges I've had, um, I, I do pride myself probably most on my resilience above everything else. I know I'm a creative person and um, I do try to be as kind as I can to people and I try to have an optimistic outlook on life. My ability, I feel, to just kind of stick to the path and not be swayed by challenges and to just stick to it, I do pride myself on that. So resilience. Traveling alone down a deserted road, you reach a crossroads. Do you continue left towards the sea, right towards the castle, ahead towards the forest? Well, look, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead towards the forest because forests are cool. <laughs> Do you most fear fire, darkness, isolation, heights, small spaces, small spaces. And I say small spaces because I feel like at my heart, I'm an adventurous person and I want to do a lot with my life. I want to see and do a lot and small spaces confinement is just, it's terrifying to me. It's like, you're not getting anywhere. You're stuck, stagnant, and you don't have much space. You get claustrophobic. Everything else there, I can deal with. Heights, I love. Isolation, I can deal with. I can preoccupy myself, get work done. Darkness, darkness is darkness, whatever. Um, fire, I don't know, fire seems pretty cool to me. <laughs> um, in a chest of magical artifacts, which would you choose? A silver dagger, ornate mirror, glittering jewel, a bound scroll, golden key, dusty bottle, or a black glove? I'm gonna go with the glittering jewel, just because I feel like that might have some magical properties to it, you know? Like it can do some sort of magical thing. That sounds really exciting to me. Um, also, it's probably beautiful. All right, what's my wand? Show me my weapon of choice. Ebony wood with a phoenix core, 11 and three quarters, and a rigid flexibility. Huh. The jet black wand wood has an impressive appearance and reputation, being highly suited to all manner of combative magic and to transfiguration. Ebony is happiest in the hands of those with the courage to be themselves. Ooh, I like that. Frequently non-conformist, highly individual or comfortable with the status of, out of outsider, ebony wand owners have been found both among the ranks of the Order of the Phoenix and among the Death Eaters. Oh, this is so cool. I love this. In my experience, the ebony wand's perfect match is one who will hold fast to his or her beliefs, no matter what the external pressure, and will not be swayed lightly from their purpose. I am so proud of that. That is so cool. Phoenix core. This is the rarest core type. Really? Phoenix is the rarest? Phoenix feathers are capable of the greatest range of magic, though they may take longer than either, either unicorn or dragon cores to reveal this. Interesting. They show the most initiative and sometimes acting of their own accord, a quality that many witches and wizards dislike. Really? I mean, I know that you prefer for something not to be as crazy, right? You want to have more control, but I kind of like the idea that um, there's a bit of more of a relationship there, right? It's like your wand has a mind of its own almost. I kind of like that. Phoenix feather wands are always the pickiest when it comes to potential owners, for the creature from which they are taken is one of the most independent and attached in the world. These ones are the hardest to tame and to personalize, and their allegiance is usually hard won. I love that. I love the idea that I have to earn the permission to use this powerful wand. That's so cool. I love it. So I got a pretty, pretty average length. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> that sounded weird. Um, <laughs> okay. So I'm not like abnormal in terms of the length of the wand. Okay. 
Cool. Rigid flexibility. Okay, this will be interesting. So there, there are floppier wands in other terms. Okay. Wand flexibility or rigidity denotes the degree of adaptability and willingness to change possessed by the wand and owner pair. Huh. Although again, this factor ought not to be considered separately from the wand would core and length nor of the owner's life experience and style of magic, all of which will combine to make the wand in question unique. Okay, so that's interesting. So it's, in other words, the wand user prefers something that's a bit more rigid and like not, not wanting to change too much. I think if we don't think too much about it and it's more just within the context of using magic and casting spells, I think, having a rigid wand that's very purposeful and very like, I want to get this done. Um, I, I like that. It's a tool. It's a tool and has a purpose and I like it to be rigid. Ebony wood, Phoenix core, 11 and three quarters and rigid flexibility. Okay, so there you have it guys. That's my, I did, I did the test. So I'm a Gryffindor. My Patronus is a fox and I have an ebony wand with a Phoenix core. Who else has an ebony wand with a phoenix core? I'm gonna do the research too, but outside of this video, can you guys comment and just leave information for me about um, what the these different things mean? Um, what it says, obviously this isn't, don't take it too seriously. Like, I don't want this to be like a defining thing. I'd just be very interested to see what normally these sort of things would be associated with when it comes to your personality and that sort of thing. Um, so I got a Patronus Fox and an Ebony ebony Wood Wand with a Phoenix Core um, and I'm a Gryffindor. Interesting. But I could also be a Slytherin depending on the questions. Um, okay, that's cool. I, I really enjoyed doing that test, guys. That was a lot of fun. Um, okay, we did it. Uh, I hope that was fun for you guys. I tried to make that as entertaining as possible. I just enjoyed myself watching this um, and, and being part of these different quizzes. I really enjoyed being part of this universe and really exploring the franchise and really getting immersed in it. It was a, it was a lot of fun. I'm very, I'm looking forward to reading the books. I might um, listen to the audiobooks um, just because I think audiobooks just suit my workflow very, very easily. I like to listen to audiobooks a lot um, and I don't, I pretty rarely sit down and read for long periods of time um, just because I'm so on my feet all the time. Uh, but yeah, I'll try and read more about the franchise and um, that sort of thing. I had, a, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. I will see you all next time. Stay cozy.